Hey guys, welcome back. Josh here. Thank you for following along on our channel. If you haven't followed along and you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm also on Instagram at Building with Josh. But today I got a really cool project that can kind of up, like give your kitchen a wow factor and make your wife happy or you wives happy. Um, I took our kitchen space and did some under cabinet lighting with a nice dimmer switch. I also did some above cabinet lighting, but it's really nice for our function during the day when you're cooking, but also gives really nice low lighting at night with the dimmer switch. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I went ahead and did that in this video today, and we're going to get right on into it. So as when you start any project, it's nice to prep, and I'm using cardboard just to protect the countertops. Also, it's easier for cleanup, and then if I set tools down, I don't ship my uh, countertop. So, I highly recommend just covering your work area, getting all the tools that you need. So, this is the materials I'm going to be using. I got this off of Amazon. This is a transformer and dimmer switch all in one. It's kind of pricey, but well worth it and nice and clean for the install. These are my 2700K LED light strips. Again, these are a little pricier, but they're better quality. This is my 23 gauge low volt wire I did run, but I ended up changing to 18 gauge. And then just a cheap soldering iron that I got also off of Amazon. And then I got this double gang box off of just from Home Depot, changing it from a single gang box. And then this white aluminum channel is what I'm gonna be mounting to the bottom of the cabinets to give a continuous light strip. I got this off of Amazon, came with a clear, or I mean a frosted plastic diffuser. And these are the things I'm gonna be using for this install. So the very first thing I wanted to do is decide where to tap power into. I had this one light switch that turned on an overhead light above the kitchen sink that seemed like a perfect spot. So you wanna find where you want to tap it power into, and then make sure you turn off the power source at the panel so you don't get shocked while working on it. What I'm going to do here is where there's a single gang box, I'm going to make it a double for both switches. So keeping the original placement on the one box, I'm just going to simply go to the side, make it big enough for a double gang box, using a multi-tool, making sure I don't go too deep because sometimes you don't know what behind that she rock is. So very carefully just removing the sheetrock. These boxes are adjustable in and out, which are perfect for a backsplash so you can adjust it in and out with a simple screw. But it has this metal bracket that attaches to the stud, the face of the stud. So I had to go ahead and enlarge my hole larger to get those screws off. Simply unhook all the wires, the switch. I have this 90 degree tool, new tool got to use to get these screws out sideways well worth the purchase on the very first week. Sweet. Get that new box in, get the wires back in, get it mounted up. Now since we're adding an extra switch here, we're simply going to take the hot, the neutral, and the ground and add pigtails to it, just some short pieces of wire. We're going to basically tee it off and split it. Get them wire it together. Then I got my new adjustable dimmer transformer switch that I'm going to be using. It takes 110 and converts it to low volt. That's why I went ahead and chose this. I thought this would be the cleanest way so because it acts as a transformer as well rather than running transformer elsewhere. Sometimes I like to use electrical tape on the wire nuts just as extra added assurance. Get it shoved in there all nicely and there we go. So here I'm going to simply just cut a notch for my low volt wire. Since low volt wire is not dangerous if you hit it, there's no restrictions on where you put it. I am simply, since I don't have tile on the wall yet, I'm just going to v-notch my sheetrock instead of cutting the sheetrock completely off and going in the studs. See, I have blown insulation and I didn't want to deal with that and I wanted to keep the fire barrier, so I'm just simply v-notching 
enough space for the low volt wire and then the tile will go on top which will protect it. And <laughs> Okay, so I got this installed. This is my LED dimmer. Um, it's hooked up right now. This is where I gotta hook my two wires, low volt two, coming through the box. This is the wire I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna run this anywhere in between the LED lights. So what I went ahead and did is since we don't have a backsplash, that's why I'm doing this now, is I went ahead and just V-grooved this, which is fine because this is gonna be low volt. We're gonna tuck it right in there and I might uh, do some hot glue to hold it until I do the tile. But we're gonna come across here. I'm gonna come up in here, right behind the cabinet, I think, and then I'm gonna drill a hole right here and bring it through here and drill down. And then over here, I'll do the same, come up through here, and then that'll be, be one strip. This will be another strip. And I did uh, V-notch this in case I want to put some lights up on top of the cabinet. I'm not sure yet, but went ahead and got that. Now I'm ready to go ahead and run my wires. Okay, so that's what I did, just drill the hole, ran the wires through here. Once I determine where I want my lights on the bottom side, I'm gonna poke a hole through down through here into my aluminum channel that's gonna run down in here. Just went through the, by the wall where my cut is, right where I can hook it up to the box. Now I'm simply gonna repeat, gotta do over here, that's gonna continue this run. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, but right up here. So what I'm gonna use is an aluminum channel with a diffuser, and I'm gonna run it continuous underneath here. I'm gonna notch the cabinets because I think a continuous strip will look the best on the countertop, plus the diffuser will take away from like, um, where you can see the individual LEDs shining on the countertop, so it should help make it like a continuous looking, like, I don't know, tube as you will. So if you're looking up also, then you don't see the LEDs. You see this nice clean channel with the diffuser. So that's the way I'm gonna do it. So, but I got these little clips here. So I'm gonna have to mount it not completely to the front. I'm gonna mount it just back a little bit, whatever that is, which says it's like three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Notch this out, mount this channel, drill a hole for this wire to come down into it, and then I can take these LEDs I got and solder them and run it to the length and we'll uh, see how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my DeWalt molded tool or oscillating tool as you would call it to make a precise clean cut for this channel. I really want this nice and tight. You don't want it oversized because you can kind of tell. Luckily for me, my channel is white and so is my cabinets, so that just kind of helps all blend together. Now I'm going to get my measurements. The channel is not wide enough to do both cabinets here, so I'm going to seam them together where the cabinets join so you don't see a seam. So I'm simply going to go ahead and mark and uh, go ahead and cut it on this miter saw, put a st uh, steel cutting blade on it. Worked really nice, it actually came out really clean. So once I got all my wires cut to length, I am also gonna use some heat shrink here, but I got my LED light strips that I can solder my wires to. 
So I'm just going to solder my red lead and my black lead here. I'm not a professional solder, so an additional hand would have helped, but I just took uh, my soldering iron, my solder, and just soldered to the lead. Just took a couple tries. So if you had somebody to help hold it in place, it probably would have been would be a little easier. There you go. I got my high quality LED light strips working now. And then I just took some heat shrink where the joint is from the wire to the LED strip, heat it up. And this is just a way to make your build a little bit better. Seal it up. And then simply peel and stick in this channel. And then I also have my diffusers, which I also had to go ahead and cut the length, just like my channel, two pieces. There's just like a frosted piece of plastic. And there we go. It looks like a tube of light. Beautiful. And there we go. I got my first set done. Now all you got to do is repeat. This side I just took a little bit longer because I had a 45 degree cabinet to deal with. So I mitered. My channel is at 45 degrees. I am attaching to the bottom of the cabinet with some shallow self tappers. Just make sure not to poke through the, I think it's three quarter inch in the box. Might be half. But some real shallow tappers that don't poke through the bottom of the cabinet. So now this is how it came out. This is how this 45s came out. It came out really nice and sharp. This is how it looks from underneath. It's very nice and clean. I really like the channel. Way better than just running LED strips. So I did end up deciding to run lighting above the cabinets as well. I figured why, why not since I'm doing all of this work. So I did have to order more LED strips which took a little bit longer to get here because I got them off of Amazon. But it was way faster and easier to do the above cabinets because I didn't have the channel to deal with. I'm just stuck and peeled. And this is how it looks. It lightens up above the cabinets. Really like it. I think it looks sharp. This is the final result. It came out very nice. has a soft glow. Very happy with it. I know it seems like quite the project, but thanks for following along. I think it came out very clean very happy with it. Until next time guys, Josh out.